Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to another Transfer News Reaction Show. But it's a bit different because it's not a reel, it's not a short. It's actually uh, a discussion that I wanted to have about uh, the Kylian Mbappe saga. A saga that, you know, when we first about heard about this break, um, I said at the time, and I think a lot of people said it, that this is a saga that's going to run and run and run and run. This is not something that's going to be resolved in a week or two weeks. It is going to run and run and run and run. And that is what has happened. It's been running and I think it will keep running. And um, what we now have heard, of course, this is coming from Fabrizio Romano. Um, and of course, other outlets have reported it on it as well, that now uh, PSG have cons are considering uh, Kylian Mbappe as he's up for sale. So basically, they are wanting to get him, they want to get him transferred out of the club. And they put him up for sale, basically, because um, they don't want to lose, lose him on a free in 2024. But the quotes that have come in, um, and of course, I'll read them out here because I think it's very important to kind of discuss what's actually going on and then look at uh, um, what's actually, what actually could happen. Because I think, you know, we sometimes when we, when we look at these reports, we kind of think, okay, this is, um, you know, what, or this is what, what, what could happen, but, or this is what will happen. But the reality is just because a club wants something to happen or a player wants something to happen. Doesn't mean it always pans out that way. But anyway, let's go through the quotes first. So uh, this, is what, this is coming from Fabrizio Romano. He said that, um, you know, they consider, PSG consider Mbappe for sale starting from today. Um, and that they don't want to, and, and that PSG feel that Kylian Mbappe wants to leave for free in 2024. Uh, that he has not communicated anything yet, despite, uh, you know, the owner al Khalifi's uh, public statement. And he has been excluded from uh, uh, PSG Japan tour, so that's a big deal that they excluded him from the Japan tour. That I think that that I think is is the key takeaway from that statement because everything else is you know is 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 something that we already knew was going to happen because uh, something that we've said for a long time is that there's no way Kylian Mbappe um you know could there's no way that Kylian Mbappe was going to leave PSG before that deadline anyway. Um, so that's all you know rhetoric in some ways, but the fact that they've excluded him from the Japan tour. That for me is a key is a key takeaway because what that means is that PSG are now standing firm in the fact that they want to let uh, Kylian Mbappe go, or that they want him out of the club, and I think that's a very strong statement to put out. Um, but more importantly, now it sets a it sets a question: is that what happens if he doesn't leave? What happens if he doesn't leave by the end of, the, of August? If he sells the club, will they freeze him out of the club totally, or will they reintegrate him back in? I think that would be a question. But anyway, we'll come to that later. But that was interesting. Uh, there's more quotes as well here that um, that was put out. And I think, again, I'll read that out. And, and after this, then we'll go into the discussion side. because um, So basically, PSG want to sell Mbappe as soon as possible. They're open to every solution. They remain convinced of an agreement between Mbappe and Real Madrid. And that, I think, is the thing. I think they feel betrayed because they're certain that Kylian has already agreed a free transfer with Real Madrid. This despite Mbappe in interviews said he'd never leave PSG for free. So... Now, I don't know where this agreement came from about, about Mbappe saying that he would not leave PSG for free. I think the fact is that, um, and this may have been before this uh, this whole saga began, but as far as I know, starting from the time when Mbappe said, I'm going to leave PSG next year, it's quite obvious that he wants to see out this year so he can go on, free, on a free. Francois, I don't think there was ever any any anything else that was, that this conclusion, that this saga was going to conclude in. The fact is that, um, and, I've, and I've been consistent about this, Mbappe is not an idiot. He knows that there is no way, and I think anybody knows this, there's no way that a club is going to pay PSG's asking price and then also give him the salary that he demands. There's just no way that that can happen. No club can justify it. No matter how great of a player Mbappe is and could be, no matter how marketable he is, no matter how much T-shirts he can sell, no matter how many sponsorships he can bring in, there is no way a club can justify that kind of outlet. It just won't happen. So there was no way that um, and Mbappe knows that. So there was no way that that deal was going to happen. Either Mbappe would have to lower his salary demands or PSG would have to lower their transfer fee demands. PSG were probably not going to do their trans lower their transfer fee. And Mbappe definitely isn't going to lower his salary demands. And he knows that if he goes uh, next year, he can get everything that he wants from a club because he's going on a free transfer. So, um, so yeah, so I, I just didn't think it would happen. And um, whether PSG feel betrayed, I mean, a shocker, a shocker. A, a player told a club, a player had a verbal agreement with a club about something and then a player reneges on that. I mean, how many times have we seen that? How many times have we seen clubs do that? How many times have we seen clubs have verbal agreements with, with players and, and then, and then uh, you know, break that? I mean, if you if you want an example, you know, just look across the pond. Just look at Tottenham and Harry Kane and what happened there a couple of years ago. So, um, these things happen all the time. I, I, I don't have any sympathy for PSG on this. I don't have any sympathy for Kylian Mbappe on this. The reality is... Um, this was a messy situation that could have been, no pun intended, but it could have been avoided a long, long time ago. Uh, you know, just for the fact that PSG put so much effort into into getting Mbappe to re-sign last year, 
They put in so much effort. They gave him this mega billion dollar contract that they put out there. Um, and when you do that, that kind of thing, um, you're always setting a precedent and you're always opening up yourself to, to issues in terms of the fact that, uh, you know, when the time came to resign a contract, would Mbappe resign a contract? Probably not. The fact that they only gave him a two-year extension should have been a red flag right away. I mean, what player in, in his in, in, at that age, 22, 23, 24, that, you know, he's 24, I think now, uh, I think he was 23 last year. At 23 years of age, what player signs a two-year contract at that age? Nobody does that. No player does that. No player that I know, even Rashford, same age, has now signed a five, six-year contract. Nobody signs a two-year contract. What kind of club does that? Um, you only sign that if, if you know that you that, that you want to leave. Right? That's a red flag, by the way. And I don't know what kind of negotiators they had at PSG, but that was a give, dead giveaway that there's no way this is going to work. I think it was simply a power play on PSG's part, but they didn't want to let him go to Madrid, where they were trying to do the whole thing over. You know, we are as good as Madrid, we are as big as Madrid, we can keep our players uh, despite the interest of Madrid. It's what United did with Paul Pogba a few years ago. That didn't end up end well. That didn't end well. And this one also hasn't ended well either for, for, for PSG. And whatever happens from here, I think they'll look back and say this didn't work out the way we wanted it to work out because Mbappe hasn't won the Champions League. He's probably never going to win the Champions League PSG. Um, there is no way that uh, they're going to get the kind of money that they thought they would get for him. There is no way they're going to recoup their investment, at least financially, on, on, on Mbappe. There's no way they're going to recoup that. Whether they sell him this year, whether he goes on free next year, there's no way they're getting the 175 million euros, 180 million euros, whatever they paid for him. Um, so that's not going to work out either. And ultimately, you know, the relationship has broken down. So whatever happens, they're going to depart on bad terms. So all said, I think that was just a bad decision that, again, some a, a proper football club probably would have avoided making. And that's why I say I don't have any sympathy for Paris Saint-Germain. I just don't. Um, and I don't have any sympathy for Kylian Mbappe because, you know, he signed that contract knowing fully well what he was doing. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Two years from now, I will leave the club and I will go somewhere else. But for the for, for the next year or two years, he's, I think, Kylian Mbappe, in Kylian Mbappe's mind, he thought, I can stay with PSG for a couple of years and I will try and win the Champions League and I'll try and leave as a legend. All the while, I will, you know, have the power to decide to influence team decisions to create a team in, in that will support me in achieving my personal ambitions. And ultimately, I can leave as a PSG legend, right? Now, that hasn't happened. And I think what he has seen, I keep going back to this, I think he is the two things that have convinced Mbappe to leave this season. I don't think that was the plan. I think he always wanted to leave next season on free transfer. I will come to that. But I think the two reasons why he wants to leave. Number one is he saw, he's seen what has happened with Erling Haaland. I think whatever anybody says, Haaland's emergence has really put a massive. It's it's like it's it's like the Ronaldo Messi thing, right? Isn't it? I mean, Haaland's emergence has really um you know put MS uh, Mbappe into overdrive because he's seeing Haaland winning all these trophies with Manchester City. He knows that he's not going to stop. He's going to win a lot more, many many more trophies to come. And he needs to be somewhere. Mbappe knows that if he needs to keep himself in the limelight, if he needs to keep himself in that spotlight, he needs to go to a club where he's going to get that same visibility. He's not going to get it at PSG, and he, that and that's one of the reasons why he wants to move. Um, you know, the second thing, of course, is the fact that Benzema left Madrid this season. Again, I think Madrid really thought Benzema would stay another year and then they could bring Mbappe in next year. I think Mbappe thought that as well. I'll stay for another two years and then Benzema will leave and I will be the one replacing him. Now, Benzema left the season early. Even Madrid hadn't planned for it. And I think part of that, of his announcement, may have been driven by the fear that maybe Harry Kane was going there. Um, and so, therefore, he made that announcement. But I think ultimately, Harry Kane is not going to go there. I think Madrid are not interested in Harry Kane. So now it's like, okay, well, it's fine. Let's wait a year and then next year. I mean, we're still going to be in the Champions League anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So let's wait another year and then we'll go on a free transfer next year. So and that's why the, the timing of the announcement came that. Now, moving on to the crux of the issue, which I wanted to discuss really, I think, is the fact is Mbappe going to leave this season? Um, like, you know, Madrid uh, is the fact that Mbappe is put, for, put up for sale. Does that really matter? I don't think it does. And I'll tell you why. For number one, if there is already an agreement between Mbappe and Madrid to move on a free transfer in 2024, why why would Mbappe consider offers from other clubs? Like why? Why would he, why would a Manchester United or an Arsenal or um you know a Bayern Munich, for example, or or anybody, any other club that's out there that could afford him, um, Newcastle United, <laughs> you know, for, for fun's sake, um any club. That's gonna have. How are they gonna agree agree a deal with Mbappe? They just can't because even leave aside the fact of the of the transfer fee, and we'll come to that. But I mean, if you've already decided, if your mind has already said that I want to move to Real Madrid, why would Mbappe then negotiate with Manchester United or or with um, uh, you know Bayern Munich or Arsenal? Why would he do that? And I say Manchester United because at this moment in time, the most realistic club that could sign Mbappe is actually Manchester United. It's not Arsenal. It's Manchester United. And by realistic, I mean, it's still very, very, very unlikely. But I mean, realistic because obviously, you know, there's the Qatar link that could happen. I don't think it will, but it could happen. 
Um, the fact that Manchester United, all, Manchester United are, are looking for a striker and he can play there. Um, and also the fact that um, you know United, United have form for doing these kind of outrageous deals, which don't benefit anyone in the end, but you know they have form for that. So if there is any club at the moment that could sign them this summer, it's probably Manchester United. Um, but that's still like a zero point. I would give it a zero point zero one percent chance of that happening. Um, but 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 I'm saying that, and and so you can imagine what the other club, what their percentages for the others can be. But the reality is that why would Mbappe negotiate with another club when he's already had a deal with Real Madrid? So Putting him up for sale is a token thing. Oh, yeah, he's up for sale. Great. Well, uh, you know, Mbappe is going to go great. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm not leaving. Yeah, you can put me up for sale. You can you can, you can, can send me on vacation for all I care. I'm not leaving, right? It's like, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's like, you know, you can't fire me. I quit, right? Like that kind of thing. Okay, whatever. Uh, you know, um, it's, it's, just, it's just weird. Um, so that's the first issue. The second issue is the transfer fee. And I keep coming, and I, we keep coming back to this anyway, the transfer fee. What could have what what how much how much are PSG willing to lower their transfer fee demand to, to facilitate the sale? Because if they want to sell him this summer, they can't ask for more than 50 million euros. And I, I say that with this dead straight face, 50 million euros is the maximum that any club is going to pay for him, considering his wage demands and selling on fee. And will PSG sell for 50 million euros? I'd rather they let him go for free than sell him for 50 million because, you know, you sell him for 50 million euros. Yes, you let him go for free. Yeah, you know, you, you're a bit of a laughing stock and, you know, people will, will, will you know, will, will do all those sort of things. But if you sell him for 50 million euros, that's worse. According to me, that's worse because image-wise, now not financially, but image-wise, that's worse because, I mean, imagine the fact that you're selling probably the one, probably one of the best players in the world. Um, You're selling him on a cut price still because you want to, you know, because... You know, you you made a bad mismanage. You mismanage the whole situation. What I would do is, you know, if I was, you know, and, and sometimes you have to make you have to make statements. And so, what I would actually hope PSG would do is actually freeze him out. So let him stay at the club. They've already budgeted for him anyway. You might as well freeze him out. Let him stay at the club. Let him not play a single game. Maybe put it. Let him trade with the reserves. You make you 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 know you've got to send a statement out. I think keeping him out of the Japan tour is a good start, and that should have been done. But I think even if he stays at the club post-August, they've got to just say, you're not playing for this team. You're not playing for this club. You're not going anywhere near the first team. We want you to train with the reserves. Um, that's it, right? Because you don't want his toxic presence around the club. And, you know, maybe if he shows some professionalism, maybe he shows, you know, what I'm committed to the cause. Maybe you bring him back in slowly, maybe. That can happen. There's always a way back. And I believe that everybody deserves a second chance. But I think at least at the start of the season, probably for the first three, four months, he's, he cannot be anywhere near that squad. If his mind is set on a move from, to Madrid... He should not. She should not be anywhere near that squad. Now that's my opinion. And you keep him out for a year, and then you see, you know, and that and that drops his value as well. And maybe Madrid might be like, oh, well, he's not played for a year. Um, how much do you want to give him? His salary demands will have to be lowered. There's all sorts of things to, to consider. So it's not as simple from Mbappe's point of saying, okay, don't play me, and it's and I'm happy with that. Um, I I think there will have to be some concessions from his side as well. So um, do I? I mean, yeah. So so that's where I think it is because I really don't think you can sell him for fifty million euros. I think that's. That's just, I mean, financially, yes, you probably would want to sell him for 50 million euros rather than sell him for free. I get that. But um, will somebody be willing to pay 50 million euros aside from Real Madrid, right? Um, and would they, would Mbappe want to go there, right? Uh, so so those, those are considerations that I think will have to be taken into account. Do I think Mbappe will leave at the end of the season, at the end of this summer transfer window? I still don't think he will. I don't think he will. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. I just don't see how... In what world could it happen? And it would have to be a pretty incredible, incredible deal. And I'd be happy to be proven wrong, by the way. But I just feel it'd be too incredible at this one in time. It would be a really incredible deal for any club to pull off. So I just don't think it will happen. But I can, I can see why PSG are desperate for it to happen because they really want to, you know, end this whole saga. And I, and I don't blame them. And if I was in their position, I'd want this whole saga to end too. But I just don't. I just don't know. I just don't know how it could happen. And and that's that's where it is. But Anyway, you know, stranger things have happened. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it and um, we'll, we'll let you we'll keep you updated as things happen. Of course, like I said, this is a saga that's going to run and run and run for a little while. It's got a few more legs and a few more chapters to write. So uh, we'll see what happens. Do share your thoughts, of course. What do you think about this whole situation, this whole mess? Um, you know, do you have a, you know, do you pick a particular side in this one? PSG, Mbappe, um, you know, what, where do you think Mbappe will end up? Uh, you know, will he stay at PSG? Will he leave? Do share your thoughts. Always love listening to you guys, of course, and, and getting your thoughts on, on this matter. Uh, do subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Always appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.